Hi, and welcome to part two of this Python video series, you can say. Um, in the last video, what we did is we imported a CSV file using no modules in Python. We created our own module, um, but we did not use the CSV or pandas module. Uh, and what that gave us, uh, just so you guys can see here, is if we run this, uh, we basically got a dictionary of all the different rows in our in our CSV file. So if I do a 4x in data and then we do print data x here, we can see that we get all the rows. Uh, we get some strings that say null in it. If they don't have any data for it, so that works out really good. Um, so let me just uh, scroll so you guys can actually see it. Uh, there you are. So, so you can see that it just has a string of null uh, where there was actually no value for it. So what I also did uh, kind of mention in the last video was that you could actually specify uh, a primary key in your optional parameters and then um, kind of link it up here. So this way it's a little bit more flexible for people. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that before we get on to the rest of the video, uh, which is, uh, like I mentioned in the last video, how to display this, what we call a, a data frame, but really it's just a dictionary. We're going to display it as if it was like a database table. It's going to have all the columns at the top and then all the data down, uh, kind of nicely formatted. Um, I'm not great at styling, so you could probably make it look a little bit nicer than I can, um, but it'll get the job done and display it as a table, uh, which does look pretty nice. So what we need to do in order to specify a primary key is we're going to create another uh, parameter here, and we are going to make it a optional parameter or optional argument. Uh, we're going to name it PK for primary key, and we are going to set that equal to by default as ID. And then what you're going to want to do is in line 13, where we do the data frame line data zero equals to the list of row, we're going to do row and we're going to do PK. And what this does is if we specify ID here, which we don't because it's an optional parameter and the default value is PK uh, is ID. Uh, but if we run it here, uh, you can see that it actually here, let me just do this and let me run it again. It does run perfectly good. And then what we could do in this point is actually change this to, um, let's do PID. And then we are gonna do this to PID. And then if we run it again, we can see that it actually uh, does work and it actually changes the ID to PID. Uh, but besides that, the data actually looks great. Um, everything loads in properly. So everything works there. So let's go ahead and let's try to get this nicely formatted so we don't have to look at it this way. And we'll get all the headers and then all the data underneath it with the ID on the side. So what we're going to want to do for that is go to our data module.py and we are going to create another function. And we're going to create this function. We're going to call it. Um, we are going to call it print data. I think that sounds like a pretty good name. And what we are going to do is we are going to reference it as data here. And then just to make sure that it works, we're going to do a straight print data here. Like I said, this is kind of like what I like to do. And then in the import statement, we're going to want to imp, uh, import our print data. And then what we can do here is we can do print data, data, and there we are. So it does actually print. So we can go back to our module here. So. The first thing that we want to do here is we need to grab the headers. 
So what we're going to want to do is the way that I kind of broke it down is we need to have the headers and then we'll have all the data. Now, the easiest way to probably look at this is going to be to store it all in a list. So we're going to create a list called tables. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grab the headers first. So we are going to do for call. Um, for let's do four X in data. And then we are going to do, um, we're going to create a empty list here of headers. Now this is going to be a little bit weird. I couldn't do this a shorter way. It's a little bit inefficient, but it does get the job done. Uh, so we're going to do four calls. So four column in our uh, data x, and then we're going to do zero dot keys, and then we're going to do headers dot append call, and then what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to do a print headers just to see what it looks like. So if we run this here, we can actually see that we do get our list of headers here. So we get our PID first, last, and test. And then if we actually just change this here to that, take this out, take this out, and we run it again. Oops, and actually we need to change this to ID in this case we get ID first and last. So that is perfect. So now that we have our headers, now what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to put our headers into our table. So our table is going to have a another, it's gonna have nested lists. So our table is gonna be one list and then it's gonna have list, list, list. Uh, so it's gonna be a two dimensional list uh, and then the first, item, which is a list, is going to be the list of the headers. Uh, so that's just kind of a whole bunch of lists in there. But hopefully you guys can kind of get what I'm trying to, to say. So we're going to do a table dot append, and we're going to append the headers. And then what we can do is we can print our table. And let's save that. And let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, we have a list inside of a list with all of our headers. Uh, so that's exactly kind of what I was trying to do. And now what we're going to do is we're going to insert the rows afterwards. Uh, and this way, it's just easier to print out to the screen this way. Uh, there's probably a way to do it with dictionaries, but it would probably be super overly complex. This, we just kind of rip the data out and place it in a nicer format. And then we can easily print it out to the screen. And I just find that this way is a lot easier to read uh, if someone comes in and reads your code later. So now what we want to do is we want to grab all the rows. So we're going to do four X in data. And then we are going to want to do a row equals a empty list here. And then again, four call in uh, data X. And we're going to reference zero again dot values this time because the keys is, is the actual name of the columns that we wanted to grab. Now we want to grab the values. So we're going to reference the dot values. And again, these are all functions that you can see in the Python for beginners tutorial series, which I will be linking at the bottom of this video as well. Just this way you guys could kind of see where I'm getting these dot values dot keys from and why I'm using these X's and zeros. So just a little explanation is the data X is going to be, um, if I run this here again, the data X is going to be this. So the X is gonna be this. Data X is actually gonna be grabbing this here. And then the zero grabs the first item in the list, which is actually the object. So that's where the X zero is. In case you guys are kind of wondering where I got that from, that's where I got that from. Um, so then what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna do row 
dot append and then the column and then we're going to do table dot append and we're going to append the row and then what we can do here is we can do print table and now we should see our table which is going to have a list of the headers and we should see a list for each row afterwards so let's see what that looks like so here it is actually let me just clear the screen and run it for you guys again so you guys can actually see it on the screen here so here we have the table we have our first list in the list which is our headers then we have our first row our second row our third row and our fourth row so that is perfect so now what we want to do is we want to actually print out this table and not just print it out like what we just did but we actually want to make it look uh, nice here so what we're going to do is we're going to do for row in table and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab the length of you don't actually have to do this so what i want to do is i'm actually going to do it like a somewhat simple way and then i'm going to add a little bit of complexity to the print to make it look slightly nicer so what we're going to do is we're going to have an empty string here and then what we're going to do is we are going to do so we want to grab each row so let's do a print row here just to see what this looks like so i kind of forget what this looks like okay so here we have all kind of like what we want it to look like but we don't want any of these brackets we don't want any of these um, single quotes we just want the data in kind of columns so what we want to do is we need to get so a string and then for value in row we're going to do string plus equals value um, we're going to do an f string and then open and close curly brackets value and then space space and then what we're going to do is we're going to do a print string i think that that will work so there it is so um, it does look a little bit nicer um, so we have our ID, which are all lined up here. We have our first names and then we have our last names. So it does look a little bit better. Um, but what I like to do actually is I like to do this here. So we're going to have our num calls equals len of row. And then what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and do for i in range of num calls so what we're basically doing is we're grabbing the number of columns inside of that row and then we're going to iterate through all of the numbers and we're going to be, be placing the values and the reason why we just want to grab that i value is we want to see if it's the last column in the row or not that is the simple use of the i and then we're going to dictate what we want the display to be for that column so what we're going to do is if i is equal to num calls minus one all we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do the string plus equals an f string and we are going to do value and that is uh sorry we're gonna do row i which is going to be our value in this case and then otherwise what we're wanting to do is we're going to do string plus equals 
an F string, and we're going to do a row I, and then we're going to do a closing bracket, and then we're going to do a space dash dash, and then another space. And now if we run this, we get this. So it looks a little bit better, a little bit easier to read. You kind of know where the columns end uh, for each row. And then in the last column, we of course don't see anything. And then once again, if we add a value here to don't see me, and then we run this here, we don't actually see it. But if you did for some reason add a test here, now you'll see it. You'll see the see me and we automatically get the nulls here. So it's a little bit easier uh, to, to read and see this way compared to, to this. This just looks really, really complex. Uh, but this is more of what you'd be used to seeing working with databases and data frames with pandas. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this video here. Uh, so we've seen how to import CSVs and actually how to print out a pretty nice looking table uh, based on the data from those CSVs that we've created uh, using our own modules. Uh, so there is really, like you could use Pandas, Pandas has a lot of other features that are super useful. Um, but if you do ever want to just import CSV files, and for some reason, if you don't have access to Pandas or other modules, you can definitely write it yourself. It is not too, too difficult. Uh, there are a few gotchas. And of course, like I said, this doesn't capture all the possibilities that could go wrong, um, but definitely it does work pretty well. Uh, so once again, if you guys have any suggestions for more videos, place it down in the comments and I will take a look at those and do them. Uh, most of the next videos will have to do is Python, uh, a lot of Pygame, maybe some more of these little don't need to use module videos in Python because you could make it yourself without the module. Um, let me know and like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when the next videos come out and i will see you on the next video